Hello everyone and welcome to our new video training package of Abacus. Implementation of cohesive by interaction and element-based methods in Abacus, a comprehensive and example-oriented package for advanced Abacus and finite element users. Let's look at its content in this 15 minutes demo. If you want to start analyzing your projects in Abacus, it is better to save your time by watching this demo and making your decision easier. Do not waste your time watching amateur and weak videos on YouTube. This package contains one lesson and three workshops in more than 70 minutes. And here I will present you the syllabus of some workshops and we can see some selected parts of them. In the lesson, five main below topics are discussed. Different methods to simulate cohesive behavior. Traction separation formula for cohesive behavior. Settings for initial thickness of cohesive with traction separation law. Criteria of progressive damage behavior in cohesive materials. And some more learning topics about cohesive simulation in Abacus. We will look in depth into cohesive behavior in Abacus. Adhesive behavior can be seen in a variety of structures, such as the connection of the linear to the composite part of the composite tanks. The connection of the composite part to the access cover of tanks and the connection of various industrial parts, such as shafts. The following relation is the equation of cohesive behavior, which is called traction separation. In this regard, unlike other relationships in which there is a stress and a strain, traction or stress and separation have been used. Here, K plays the role of a stiffness. The relationship between separations and strains in each of the normal and shear directions corresponds to the three relationships that T0 is the initial thickness of the adhesive and delta is the separation that occurs in the cohesive. If we consider cohesive behavior as these two lines, in the first region we have a completely elastic behavior for the cohesive until we reach a region. After this area, the, the stiffness decreases to reach delta F. Once we reach the point of damage initiation, we will have reduced properties or progressive damage. If we want to calculate stress at any point in the reduced stiffness phase, we must use these relationships. In this relation, D is damage variable and T is initial stress. Another method to obtain damage variable is the energy method. Suppose we have traction in three directions according to this diagram. The area below the traction separation diagram is toughness, so we have Gn, Gs and Gt. As mentioned earlier, the top points of these graphs are damage initiation points. Damage variable is calculated based on the same relation as before except that in energy method, the delta M is obtained from this relation. In this regard, G critical can be obtained from two methods, which we explained below. And T effective is equal to traction at the point of damage initiation in a state where there is traction in all three directions, which is called mixed mode. According to power law, if this relationship is established, G critical is equal to G total. There are two classes of problems in element-based cohesive modeling. Adhesive joints problems. In such problems, we have adhesive layers with a certain thic thickness. Also, material properties are specified for it. Delamination problems. For example, suppose you have a composite that you want to model the adhesive between its layers. 
in which case the layer thickness is zero and they may not have material properties. You can specify the viscosity coefficient in the mesh module. For example, here we have the traction separation diagram for a cohesive. The green graph corresponds to the zero viscosity coefficient, which is the software default. Other graphs with different viscosity coefficients are plotted here. As you can see in the orange graph, where the viscosity coefficient is very high, our problem solving is wrong and even shows the damage initiation wrongly. In this workshop, we are going to simulate a single lab joint under tension that is bonded using adhesive. The parts are made of steel and their dimensions are in accordance with the information here. The mechanical properties of steel, as well as the mechanical properties of the cohesive material, including the properties of elasticity, damage onset as well as the information required for progressive damage is provided. In the element-based method, unlike the surface-based method, there is no need to determine the cohesive behavior in the interaction module. Considering that there is no part for cohesive in surface-based method, you should define interaction properties for cohesive. Since cohesive may be lost during analysis and the two steel parts may collapse and interfere into each other, we must define a contact property between the co cohesive and the other parts. This contact is just for inhibiting parts to interface and doesn't relate to cohesive modeling. Click on Create Interaction Property tool, create a contact uh, to the default settings in this case, normal behavior is normal and tangential behavior is frictionless. Enter the Create Interaction tool and select the General Contact option. Enter the amount of displacement in the Z direction by 1 mm. Note that we want to apply this load to the model with a smooth amplitude. So here we open the options and select the smooth option. Enter the number 0 and 0 and 0 0.1 and 1. As you can see in the result module, stress is 0 at the beginning of the analysis and increases over time. The cohesive damage index can be viewed by selecting the quads CRT option which is based on the quadratic stress criterion. Let's see the quad CRT uh, graph for the cohesive part in the last element. We use the XY data tool and read the data from the ODB field output. Choose the last element. Because we have four integration points, we have four graphs and all of them have reached the value of 1. We also plot the CDEG diagram which is damage index. We also draw a stress strain diagram, but it is not very useful. Because we have to use cohesive criteria to be able to examine cohesive damage, and using criteria like Mises stress is not recommended.
In this workshop, we are going to simulate a brick wall which has cohesive between the bricks. Because we have so many surfaces, we use the surface base method for cohesive modeling between bricks. Mechanical and geometry properties of the bricks and concrete beam are shown here. You can see how bricks and concrete beams fit together. Note that some bricks are half. The reduction of adhesive properties in the surface-based method is of exponential type. The exponential coefficient is given here. We have a 10 MPa pressure load on the top surface of the concrete beam and 660 kN concentrated force on the left side of the wall. We also should define a friction coefficient between bricks in case the cohesive is destroyed. We start the simulation. Enter the interaction module. In interaction property manager section, we defined cohesive behavior and damage for, co uh, for contact properties. In the cohesive behavior property, we set the, tra the traction separation behavior calculations to the default state. Although we can specify the stiffness coefficient ourselves by choosing this option, this is a feature that exists in the surface-based method. Well, since we are using the explicit solver and surface-based method, we need to create a general contact interaction between the surfaces with the specifications we have defined. Note that before creating the interaction, we must first determine the surfaces that are to be in contact with each other. If we look at the results for the damage index of the structure, we see that the damage index between the parts reaches 1 and the structure completely collapses. Here, cohesive damage initiation index called CS max SCRT is shown. CSDMG shows damage variable for cohesive surfaces and when it reaches 1, damage is completed and wall is collapsed. In this workshop, we are going to simulate debonding behavior of a double cantilever beam, which are stick together by cohesive and the surface base method is conducted for this simulation. The two sides of the end of the beam are tensioned with a certain displacement and we examine the cohesive behavior. The end of the beam is completely fixed. Mechanical properties of cohesive and steel are shown here. The applied displacement is equal to 2 mm. Because we want to see the results for different increments and we don't want to see the final results at once, so we set the initial increment and maximum increment to 0 0.1. In this case, we can see the results in 10 steps. As in the previous analysis, we specify the cohesive properties in the interaction module. To do this, select the contact option from the Create Interaction tool and set the cohesive behavior and damage properties. Here we specify the stiffness coefficient ourselves and enter the corresponding number in the three directions. 
normal cohesive thickness and shear. You can also see the damage specifications here. Damage evolution is defined as energy and linear softening. You can also see the damage specifications here. Damage evolution is defined as energy and linear softening. Note that because we use the standard solver, we have to specify the viscosity coefficient and this coefficient must be specified here in the stabilization tab, unlike the element-based method which was specified in the mesh module. We determine a deformation scale factor so that we can see we can better observe the simulation results. Plot a force displacement diagram for the end point. We use the XY data tool and view the outputs for the ODB field output. Select reaction force in direction 2 and displacement in direction 2 for the last node as you see here. Enter the operate on XY data section and use the combined function and specify the vertical and horizontal axis of the chart as input for it. As you can see in the diagram, the force initially increases linearly. And after the cohesive is damaged and its properties decrease, the force decreases. You can see other parameters related to cohesive here. For example, the parameter related to damage initiation based on maximum stress criteria can be seen here, which is increasing. The damage index results are also clear here. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. I hope you have got enough information about this package. But don't worry at all. If you have any questions about this tutorial, ask us via support at caeassistant.com.